man. Thank you, Jesus. We always like to start a Bible study uh, with reading scripture. We've been declaring Psalms 91. And uh, we also like to receive prayer requests. So if you join us for the first time, please text us at 407 490 4019. And give us your request. Again, the number is 407 490 4019. And please uh, go to your Bibles to Psalms 91. It's powerful. We've been declaring this this whole season that we've been going through. And this power in the Word of Jesus is very important. Mm -hmm. We all declare it together. Let's begin. Who, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in the day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made me the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, and scratch you for against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and serpent, you shall trample on foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Amen. Glory to God. Now let's welcome yeah. our wonderful pastor, Pastor Shrek. Yeah. We're going to bless us this evening. Amen. 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 What a blessed day. What a blessed day. Amen. This is amazing, you know, during the time of fast, that uh, uh, it is allowing us to come closer to God and come closer to God's uh, revelation and uh, all those things um one of the things that we've been doing every day is to partake in the communion Amen. because this is all about him we drawing ourselves closer to him than ever before Amen. you know this is a time for us to see more of him so and again boosting ourselves no matter what is going on around us what kind of news is happening around us knowing that we are not alone we are in this with him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. That, is, that is very powerful. You know, many times when we are going into something, you don't know who is with you, who is not with you. But bless God, he says that, you know, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I will never leave you, not forsake you. Amen. Glory be to God in heaven. That's the biggest comfort I can ever have. Yes. The one God who said, I'm never going to leave you, man. Right. I'm never going to take my eyes yeah. off of you. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So uh, we serve a God who is always faithful. So I am celebrating his faithfulness every day during this time and taking communion every day. I encourage you to do it. Bible says as often. As often. You know, it's not a, let's not make it religious. It is not a religious sacrament. It is a human acknowledgement of, of our frailty and rejoicing in God's provision. Amen. 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 That's a celebration. You know, I like it when the, uh, 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 the yeah, Catholics call the Sunday service as Mass. You know what Mass is? Celebration. Mm -hmm. It's a celebration. You know, it's a celebration to come into the presence of God. It's a celebration to be able to break bread with our God, knowing that confidence, hey, I have my Father with me. Amen. I've been through so many things by myself today. You know, 
you know, we all have all those burdens, but now it is time for us to be refreshed that knowing God is with us. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, I want to also give a shout out to every one of you. Let us not forget to pray for the people right now. There are so many people that we know are being attacked by fear. And because of that fear, they are crumbling. Yes. They, are, they are being boxed into a corner. You know, I see that happening, even especially for the elderly people. Don't just walk by them. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Pray for them. It is time for us to lift each other up. Mm -hmm. Not just elderly people. There are so many people that did not put their focus on God are, are, are struggling with this fear. This panic attacks are happening. Mm -hmm. People are stuck with anxiety. People are stuck with depression, not knowing what is going to happen, what will be our tomorrow, what is this, what is that. All this uncertainty they are dealing with. They need a calmness in their mind. And I'm talking to you, if that is you that is going through, remember Jesus loves you. Remember that. There is power in that. Just talk to yourself that Jesus loves me right now. You have, to, you have to say that. Believe in it. And I'm with you. We are going to pray for you. We are going to pray with you. And I encourage you. Remember this scripture where it says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I think we should recite it. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and our sound mind. Glory be to God in heaven. You know, let's do that so we can be rejoiced and we can be pumped to do what God is calling us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, uh, for our Bible study, um, you know, we are studying in the book of Acts, um, Dunamis, the study of Acts. You know, you can't just study uh, Acts as a theory because Acts is just a, a record of what the Holy Spirit has done. That, that's pretty much it. Dunamis, the word namis means the power of God. Simply to put, power of God. So I, I, I want us to always uh, remember uh, this thing. When there is no power to back things up, no matter what you say or no matter what, how big your dream might be, whatever it might be, what is power in this? You always need to understand that. Remember, many times we have these lofty ideas, lofty thoughts, and never comes to pass because it's not power driven. There is no power to back it. You know, they're running on empty. So, but, but the church is never supposed to be run on empty, you know. Unfortunately, church have become that. Hence, there is no move in the church. What happens when you try to run a car on the uh, on empty? It doesn't move. That's exactly what is happening with the church. Church has become too stagnant. That's right. I mean, we have we have come to the place where uh, we are complacent, and uh, we celebrate each other more than we celebrate our God. Amen. Because God is a God of change. I celebrate you because you are created in the image of God. If God is not in the equation, there is no reason for me to celebrate you. You know what? You're full of flaws. You're full of flaws. There is no reason for me to celebrate you if you are not being pumped with the power of God. Because that is what powers me. That is what jump starts me if I ever need a jump start. That is what helps me come together. That is the real camaraderie that you and me ought to have. The power communion. Okay. Where we are connected with this power and where we can shoulder each other. Someday you are very strong, someday I am strong. We both can match each other up and go at it. Go at it, man. That is how God designed us to be. So we can stand with each other as brothers. Amen? Amen. So go with me to the uh, book of... Um, uh, Luke, uh, 12th chapter, 11th and 12th verse. I want to read a couple of scriptures before we go back to the book of Acts. Um, book of Luke, uh, 12th chapter, 11th verse. Now when they bring to you 
Now when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Amen. Amen. Go with me again to the book of Matthew, 10th chapter, 19th verse. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Amen. 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 Have you ever been in a place where you felt like you don't know what to say? This is a situation that Jesus is explaining to his disciples, us. Amen. So when he was explaining it to them, you will be put into this situation. When it happens, not if. Amen. So, a Christian, if you are a Christian, you will be put to a place where you will be questioned, where you will be agitated, where you will be doubted, where you will be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, are you ready for that? You know, we live in a time and an age uh, where um, there is a lot of argument that is going on. A lot of debate that goes on. In, in that debate, as a Christian, it is even our responsibility to participate in it. But the problem is, you're trying to participate with your own knowledge. Own words. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I sincerely encourage you to look at this place. Look at this place where Jesus was saying, Hey! Don't worry about what you're going to speak, but, but, don't worry about what you're going to speak. That doesn't mean you speak whatever you want. What are you saying? Wait on my spirit, because my spirit is going to give you the words. Amen. Amen? Amen. That is the beauty of the Holy Spirit. You know, imagine yourself with a speech problem. Something has to come upon you to allow you to open your mouth. Right? It is a similar thing to that. When we are, are having a problem, when we are, are in a situation that we needed answers, we needed something to speak, don't wait on yourself. You and me may not know what to say, but our great Holy Spirit knows exactly Amen. what to say. Amen? Amen? It is time for church to yield to the Holy Spirit who is the communicator. We need to let the Holy Spirit speak through us rather than you. You know, this is what many people, many Christians also shy away from sharing the gospel because they think they don't know. This is exactly the scripture where God brought me one day and challenged me. If you are willing to go stand and open your mouth, I will speak through you. I asked the same question uh, uh, when he asked me to go preach. I'm like, how in the world I'm going to preach? My, my vocabulary is not that good. You know, back in the day when I first got born again, every other word I spoke was a cuss word. So now I'm going to be preaching on the Holy Bible. <laughs> Ain't nothing holy coming out of my mouth. So how am I going to preach this thing? This is exactly where he challenged me. Come, train with me, train with my Holy Spirit, so I may speak through you. Amen. The more the real conflict for me every day, any time that I'm trying to preach, is I should not speak and let him speak through me. My prayer, any time for me to share the word, I want God to speak through me. I want the Holy Spirit to be able to speak through me, not me. If I speak, I know how awful I sound. I know very well how bad my ideas are. 
So I want the Holy Spirit to take over so he may make some sense to somebody. I thought I might be leading these. It's like I thought I was the blind guy. I'm going to lead all these people to blindness. Why in the world you need me to talk, Lord? Why in the world you need me to preach? But God has given me such an amazing opportunity. Hundreds and thousands of people have been ministered through this this vessel. <laughs> to God be all the glory for that. But the, it didn't come to me just like that. But I was yielding to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. As I was yielding, He would speak through me because He challenged it. Okay, keep that in mind and let's go to the book of Acts. Fourth chapter, starting from verse 5. Remember, this is the incident where John and Peter uh, um, healed this uh, um, lame person. And when this uh, happened, everybody was, uh, uh, there were reactions. But the people who crucified Jesus saw the same thing here. They didn't like it. They didn't like what they saw. So now, what they are trying is to oppress the gospel. I want to tell you something. Oppressing the gospel is not a new concept. It's been there for the longest. Since the inception, let me say it. Since the inception of gospel, oppressing the gospel was there. But I want you to see something here, how your God, my God will work through us if we are his willing vessels. Mm -hmm. That is what the book of uh, uh, Acts is. We can, what we might think as abnormal is normal then. Mm -hmm. And I, my prayer is that as we are studying this thing, book of Acts will become normal in our life. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. That is our church heritage. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to find heritage, that is that. That's the true, true heritage for me. Church. You know, the many things that my culture didn't teach me. My nationality didn't teach me. My family didn't teach me. But when I became a Christian, the Christian culture taught me. The word cultured me. It, caught, it got me culture. It, brought, it taught me civilization. It taught me compassion. It, it taught me understanding, it taught me wisdom, it taught me knowledge. When I was adapting to the word of God, I encourage every Christian, before you celebrate your culture, let's celebrate the Christian culture. The word of God yes. culture. Amen. 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 That is what, this is what changes the differences. Mm -hmm. This is a common place where we can come together. Amen. Where we can have one accord. If this is being taken away, this is what is happening in the society right now. This is being taken away. And when this is taken away, there is no common ground. There is no common ground. Common view. There is no common view. When there is a common view, there will be unity. Why are you so worried about division when there is no common view? We don't have to worry about the division if you can work on the common view. If we can build a common view, then there won't be a division. Ah, oh, back in the day, what was the common view? This book was the most common view. That's why they weren't going out killing each other. As rampant as it was there. And today we have more knowledge of God's word. And we should be much better today. In this common view than we were in the past. Amen. Amen. We should be treating each other with utmost respect than ever before. Amen. Amen. Not the other way around. Now look at it. Everybody is abusing each other. You know why? There is no common view. Amen. There is no common ground. The word of God is what brings the common ground for us. You know, in my opinion, what you, I always say, who cares for your opinion, man? You don't have the power to fulfill your opinions. 
Amen. Amen. Only God's word has the power to fulfill. His ultimate thing, let that alone matter for us. It brings the true unity for me. What really liberated me from my isms or, or, or my, my bondage of, of, of thinking differently about different people or different skin colors or different uh, backgrounds, thinking differently about them, what really liberated me was the Word of God. Amen. And is the Word of God and will be the Word of God. Yeah. The liberation can only happen to us through the Word of God. The conviction that comes from the Word of God, the conviction that comes from the Holy Spirit, that is what transforms us. That is what brings the true unity for us. Amen? Amen. You and me can march along for the longest time, but the unity is a totally different story. You and me can ride along for, you know, many times you fly. There are millions, hundreds and thousands of people you fly with. Where are they in your life now? That's exactly how our life is, because we are not building unity. We are not trying to build a common ground. Amen? Amen. So my prayer in this during time, during this time of fasting, I also encourage you to pray that America will have the awakening of common ground of the Word of God. Amen. Nothing else. We don't need no other foundations. This is the foundation that can enable us to prosper, to grow strong, to become what it ought to be. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So now go ahead, please. Fifth verse. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Anas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. Pay attention to this. This is the same group that crucified Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now the same group is dealing with the results of Jesus. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Now look at the question. This should be the true question you want to question. By what power? Their question seems bad, but if you are truly trying to analyze something, you always need to find these two things. By what power in whose name? That is how you can identify what is the power behind it. You know, many times we are only looking at the outward reactions and forgetting it is something that is powering them, that is enabling them to do these reactions. We are all focused on the outside. Who is powering this? Like, like we see Sam, sometimes we see the movements happening around uh, the world and all these things. Now, the first question you and me need to ask is who is powering them? What is funding it? Who is behind it? You always need to question that. If you don't question, you will you will get lost. You get lost. Because you're only dealing with the fruit, not the root. Amen. We have to deal with the root for us to understand the fruit. Amen? Amen. But we are also caught up in the fruit, forgetting this is the tree that bore this fruit. Amen. Amen. Nobody is going to eat a fruit when they know it is of a bad tree. When you know it is of mango tree, you will eat the fruit of that. Because it is from the tree. But a fruit that might look very similar to mango. But it was, it is coming from a different tree. Would you eat it? Because of the tree, you won't even touch it. Many times if you go into the wilderness or into the forest, you will see the fruits in there that will look just like what you are used to buying in a supermarket. But they are not the same. They actually are deadly. They actually could kill you. Oh, well, but let me put a simple example. Mushrooms. Pretty much everything look alike. But there are very, there are so many mushrooms that are deadly. They could kill you just like that. 
When you know what the root was, what, where it came from, what is the root, you will understand, okay, this root is not something for me to eat. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's the problem in Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. They forgot the root and they ate the fruit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens. It is, that's why Solomon said there is nothing new under the sun. He is just the same story repeating itself. But anyway, go on, please. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and el elders of Israel. Now, now, now look at this thing. What Jesus has said in those two chair verses that we read before, in Luke and in Mark, in Matthew, we read those things. What did he say? When you are put to these magistrates, when you are pushed against these people, don't worry, my Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. This is the manifestation of it. How was Peter speaking here? Peter, the well, Bible says, filled with the Holy Spirit. Another translation also says, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the filling of the Holy Spirit happened in the chapter 2. Now, because he is filled with the Holy Spirit, now when he is opening himself, the Holy Spirit is speaking through him. Mm -hmm. All right, now let me, let, me, let me make another statement here. Now, the fisherman, an angry man, is becoming scholarly. Mm -hmm. A man who couldn't control his emotions, a man who couldn't withhold himself, who couldn't stop himself from anything like that. A man who was always anxious, who was always the first to jump. Mm -hmm. That same man now is about to become the, the scholarliest person you would ever meet. It is the Holy Spirit transforming him mm -hmm. from a nobody to be a scholar. <coughs> what, kind of, what kind of doctorate do you want? You want a doctorate that you can earn from these colleges? You know, there are many, many people that have all these doctorates out there can do nothing to us. But anyway, <laughs> but I'm not going there. But for you, God is giving us an opp uh, opportunity. You and me doesn't have to become doctors, but we just need to yield to the Holy Spirit so He may make you look like you're smart. You know, many times I, many people look at me, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's very smart. I'm like, okay, I don't know Jack Squad here. <laughs> I don't know much here, my man, you know, but I know somebody who knows him. Amen. He lives in me. Amen. So when we let him speak through us, he got you covered. Amen. He's also going to make you look smart. Yes. Amen? Amen? Yeah, I'd rather him make me look smart than myself trying for it. Amen. I tried for that and I failed many times. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well. I, I, I even want to point out something here. Peter is not forgetting the other person's position. Even though he is the servant of the Most High, he is not being disrespectful for the rulers. Amen? Don't we need that now? Don't we need that? These people are actually killers of their boss. Can't get worse than that. And these people are falsely prosecuting them. Even in spite of all those odds that are against them, Peter never lost respect for them. Even in his addressing, he says, rulers of the people and elders of Israel. He was acknowledging them with their position, with their authority. When you do this, this is what we forget. Many people, when they are not educated in the word of God, they forget this thing. When you acknowledge leaders or the people with the authority and when we are backing them, that is where you will have an opportunity for God to convict that person. Mm -hmm. 
when we don't do that for them we are missing out from God working into their lives whenever you are expecting that person to change like that ruler to change you will miss out on that if you don't give them the due respect that is needed you'll miss out on those things that's why even down the line in the in the many many letters it is given as an instruction for the church pray for your leaders pray for the people in your authority bad people good people and everybody so we may have a peaceful life it is upon us to pray that we may live a peaceful life go ahead please let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead by him this man stands here before you whole this is the stone which was rejected by you builders which has become the chief cornerstone look, look, look. There, there is a very very powerful concept here as much as you see this as a, a confrontation as an argument, it is also an uplifting statement. You are the builders. You are the people who are called to shoulder this. No, the opportunity was not for the fishermen. It was supposed to be the scribes. It was supposed to be the elders. It was supposed to be the high priestly family. It was supposed to be them. Because they rejected their role of building, it went into other hands. Remember what Jesus says? If you don't praise, these rocks will praise me. Are you with me? That is exactly what has happened here. Fisherman was not the first choice. If that was not so, he wouldn't have given the tribe of Levi. He wouldn't have given the family of Aaron to be the high priest. What did Jesus do? Jesus became the high priest because the high priest wasn't playing the high priest priestly role. Amen. Amen. This is where God is showing the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. Many times we don't understand this thing. If you are willing, God is willing to use you. There are many times I have seen in my life that even many parts of my calling is not my calling. It is someone else who didn't respond. I was willing to respond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was willing to respond. So he said, okay, take it. And he gives me more reward for it. I'm okay with that. Amen. I'm okay with that. I'll take it. But the sad thing is we should not give away our role to someone else. That's right. Amen. I can never give up. You know, many, many, sometimes I hear the counsel, oh, maybe God wants to use your son. I don't care. God, let God use him in his way. I need to be fully used by God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He's not God of Isaac. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. 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 He's not about the next generation he is with the current generation, the next generation, and the next generation. Mm -hmm. So don't you dare try and tell, try tell me God is in the next generation. No, he's not. He is in now generation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, please. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. Can this be written on stone? Yes. <laughs> yes. Shouldn't this be written on stone everywhere? Amen. Yes. Let this be known. This is gospel. Yes. This is what needs to be shown to every one individual. There is no other name. That's right under heaven given among men by which we must be saved that's right amen. amen so anybody that is pursuing trying to find elsewhere i'm going to tell you something there is an easy way for you to go uh, refrain from it there is an easy way for you to not waste your time come to the name of jesus come to jesus you will find everything you need 
Amen. You don't need to try try thousand things before you can find Jesus. There are people I have seen found uh, Jesus on, in their in in, in in their addictions. There are people that found Jesus in in in, in uh, uh, Hinduism, in uh, uh, Islam, in in uh, in any other different practices. I have seen I have seen people found Jesus in atheism. All kinds of things where they found Jesus. But I'm here to tell you, you don't need to go all those places to find Jesus. Just come to him. Amen. He's available. He's available. You don't need to try a thousand things before you know what is good. Amen. 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 You need the good one and you say, ah, this is it. <laughs> this is it. I'm enjoying it. Because Jesus is full. Amen. Go ahead. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated. Oh, look at that. Uneducated and untrained men, they marvel. Come on, somebody. A true wisdom and dispensation. And the beautiful thing that I have seen here is they saw boldness. How could they see boldness when they, all they're doing is talking? Yeah. It takes a lot to be the preacher of truth than anything. It takes a lot to be somebody who can preach the gospel than anything that is out there. And they were able to see that boldness. And problem right now, the problem with many churches right now, many of these so-called pastors or so-called preachers is there is a lack of boldness. Amen. Because they are not covered yes. to are connected to the power of God. That's right. They are connected to their their knowledge. Mm -hmm. This is where the doubts, the fears, the misconceptions, misconceptions, everything are coming because they're depending on their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and they, they're depending on their training. They are depending on their education. I'm not against education, but use your education to connect to the power, not run away from it. Amen. What is it? What is happening these days? If somebody goes for an education, the next thing you know, they they think they are like, oh man, I figured it out. I don't need God. I'm like, are you dumb? You exactly are dumb because you're trying to tell me that my great 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 daddy is a piece of rock. Oh boy, I need a lot of faith to believe that. <laughs> They're believing that my great 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 daddy is a dude. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Man. Come on. Yeah. Let's be real now. There's a lot of faith to believe that my ancestor was a frog. <laughs> yeah, right. Then to believe by, that my, my great daddy is a dude. Amen. Amen. So they are trying to tell me I am uneducated. Because their education is taking them to a foolishness. That's right. Are you with me? Yes. All right, let's go. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Mm. But when they had commanded them to go outside, aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, what a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. There you go. Undeniable. Undeniable. Your existence as a Christian should be an undeniable evidence of God's power. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I'm not saying something lofty over you. That should be. That should be common for us. Mm -hmm. Your existence on this earth as a Christian should be an undeniable evidence of God's power. Mm -hmm. Can we shout an amen for that? Amen. amen. Because, you know, if you are connected to the power of God, it is inevitable. It is inevitable. These people didn't know much. They are not educated much. They are not that popular. They are not nothing that is going for them. But the evidence they were providing is undeniable. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, please. 
but so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. Mm -hmm. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. Look at this. Look at this. Come on, somebody. This is real slap in the face. If you really want to talk with somebody, don't get aggressive. Let the Holy Spirit speak through you. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit speak through you. He knows how to make sense to them. They asked a wise question. Okay, you want me to listen to you or to God? Now this is the question you and me should be asking ourselves. Should I bow to God or should I bow to a government mandate? Should I bow to God or should I bow to a man-made institution? That should be a question for every Christian. We got to ask ourselves, am I bowing to man or am I bowing to God? Amen. When a man is trying to threaten you that, that if you say this gospel or when the, pe when the people are rejecting you because you are presenting the gospel, are you going to bow to that pressure or are you going to say, my God has called me to say, go ye into the world and preach this gospel. Amen. Preach. Preach. Amen. Amen. Keep going, please. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Oh, glory be to God. They said, we cannot speak. We cannot but speak. I can't, man, because this is what, why. The problem here is, I'll tell you, we have seen and heard. They have seen and heard. Now my question to you is, have you seen and heard from your God? Have you seen the hand of God working? Have you heard the voice of God instructing you? When you don't have those things happen in your life, this is most of the Christians. This is where most of the Christians are. They have not seen the power of God work in their lives. They have not heard the voice of God speak to them. And hence, their testimony is so weak. They have not seen it. You have to experience it. You have to see it. You should, when you see it, you become unstoppable. You can't shut me down, man. I, I, I know where I was. I know God brought me through. I can't shut myself up now. I tried. I tried to sit quietly in my room. I couldn't stop myself. Because I have seen too much of God's goodness in my life that won't let me That's sit right. quiet. Amen. That can't let me sit quiet. Amen? Amen? Go ahead, please. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. Amen. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. Now I'm gonna, I want to make a statement here. The man was 40 years old. Over 40 years old. Now my wife sometimes makes fun of me because I'm over 40 years and she's still in her 30s. Yeah. So it's like, okay. Uh, but the truth here is, this man had an opportunity from God, even in his 40s. <laughs> he was able to have a life transformation even in his 40s. That gives us all hope, whoever is above 40, amen? Mm -hmm. That we still have an opportunity of transformation, man. We may not be able to walk, we might be limping, we, our backs might be hurting, yeah, our right. body, our neck might yeah. be hurting, but bless God, yes. the power of God is still working in me yeah. and working yes. for me and working through me that I can't be still, I yes. can't be contained, man. Yes. I can't be, I can't be. Amen? Yes. yes. Preach. <laughs> right on. So anybody that is trying to threaten me by my age, I want to tell you something. <laughs> this lame man walk, man. This yeah. lame man walk. Don't you dare call me an old duck. Because yeah. I'm going to fly. You don't know me. You don't know me that well. <laughs> you know? Because I am powered with the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
Glory be to God in heaven. Yeah. So don't you dare tell yourself that you are old. <laughs> Too old for God to do a work That's right. in you. Amen. 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 Don't you dare say that to yourself. I am too old, man. It's getting old. No, 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 no. Come on, somebody. Because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. That is what is happening yes. right now. I'm just hibernating to renew my strength. Yes. Are you with me on this? <laughs> God's hibernation. Let's go into God's hibernation though, so we may come back renewed. That's exactly what this time of fasting is. Entering into God's hibernation so we might come out of this thing with renewed strength. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, keep going. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said. Now let take a pause here. Check, take a pause for a second here. This draw is similar to mean this. In the spice that was sent by God into Israel. When they went and saw the giants, when they went and saw the threat, they brought back a report of bad news. And the fear gripped the whole camp. But glory be to God, now there is a new sheriff in town. His name is Holy Spirit. All right, now the same people went there and got threatened. These people got threatened to the core. Now, when they are coming back into the fellowship, now this, this fellowship is not giving into fear because they have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So now what they are saying, glory be to God, they are raising their voices and speaking the will of God. Amen. 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 Then Dean said, oh man, you should be careful. <laughs> oh man, we shouldn't go that way. Maybe we should figure out something else. No, no, no. They said, let's praise God right now, man. Let's praise God. Let's come into one accord. Look at this thing. Go ahead, please. Who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? Mm -hmm. The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Amen. Amen. While there is threat, what were they praying for? Boldness. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Now, if you are being threatened with fear, I'm here to challenge you. Pray for boldness. Pray for boldness. And as a matter of fact, you have a powerhouse in you that you can draw from it that I have been given the spirit of boldness. This is a time for us to be bolder, not fearful. Mm -hmm. Bolder in the gospel, not in your stupid yeah. ideas, man. We don't need to be bold in our stupid ideas because that, that have drawn us crazy and people around us crazy. And now they say, go ahead, 30th verse. By stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Signs and wonders. Can somebody say signs and wonders? Signs and wonders. Come on, shout it. Signs, signs and wonders. This is an hour to cry for signs and wonders. Because I want us to be full of irrefutable evidences. Full of irrefutable evidence. Amen? Amen. We want them all around us. We want those records all around us that people can't deny. Oh, that's a coincidence. That's a coincidence. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
The other day my buddy was sharing this with me. Reinhard Bonke once said, you know, all of a sudden the coincidences are not happening when you stop praying. So the, whatever you thought was a coincidence, it wasn't a coincidence because it was charged with the power of God and that's why those things are lining up. That's why those things that shouldn't happen to you are happening because God's favor is working into your life. God's power is working into your life. God is putting all those things. Uh, stop being that, you, that, 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 that uh, educated idiot, let me put it that way, educated idiot where you are just happy saying it is a coincidence. No, it ain't. It is a manifestation of God's power. It is a purposeful thing from God. Because you prayed. Because you believed in God. Because you love God. Because He loves you. Amen. Amen. This is an hour for us to pray for signs and wonders. I want, I want to challenge every parent here. Don't try to present the gospel to your children without signs and wonders. This is where it is failing. The effectiveness of the gospel is failing because there is no evidence. We are not presenting the evidence. But the early church never tried to do anything without evidence. They prayed for signs and wonders. I encourage you, everyone in Covenant Fusion Church, pray. Every service of ours will be filled with signs and wonders. Can somebody shout glory? glory. glory. This is an hour for glory. What is the glory? The manifested presence of God. What is the manifested presence of God brings? It brings signs and wonders. I'm waiting for the glory. Yeah. This is what the glory is. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. You will see signs you cannot deny. Amen? Amen. You cannot deny. Not only you, the people around you cannot deny. I want us to be full of those signs and wonders happening around us that nobody can deny the existence of our God. That's right. Amen. 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 Let us tap into that more. I want to see things happen in our life. I want to see lame walk. I want to see the blind see. I want to see the deaf hear. I want to see the paralyzed walk. Oh, glory be to God. You don't know how much your faith is going to get pumped up when you see impossible becoming possible in, your, in, in front of your eyes. When I saw a man, I was taken to a village to pray for somebody that was paralyzed all this side. All this side, he can't move. Doctor said he is set to the bed forever. I said, no, 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 sir. This is young. This is young me. I was like, I was going and praying for dogs. I want to see the power of God working. Somebody called me at 4 o'clock and asked me to pray for their cow because it's not giving milk. I'm like, you know, for a minute I thought, are you kidding me? But the next minute I thought, that is his livelihood. So I got to pray for it. I got to pray for that. I prayed for it. You know what happened? The next morning it's giving milk. And this man that was condemned by the hospital, that was condemned by the doctor, when we prayed, when we laid hands and prayed, you know what happened? There was some time after a week or two, I went to that same village, and this man was riding on his bicycle and shouting, Hallelujah! Look at this! Look at what God has done. Lord! If you see that, well, how will you be? You probably will be more excited than me. I know you all. That is what we need in America. Amen. That is what we need in this God-blessed United States of America. Amen. We need signs and wonders. Yes. Now, enough of these stupid talks, man. Enough of all these, uh, all these debates and all those things. It is time for signs and wonders. Amen. It is time for signs and wonders. Let us position ourselves as church. Let us position ourselves as disciples. Let us position ourselves as somebody who is being educated by the Holy Spirit. So he may work through us. His signs and wonders. Amen. That is my prayer for us today. We will go through it later. And, and the next part, I want to read the 31st verse and end it there. Go ahead, please. And when they had prayed, uh, amen. 
the pray the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Glory be to God. The whole place shook. Have you ever experienced something like that? <laughs> when you see a hurricane go by, you know, you know it went by you. Because your whole house is shaking. When you are tapping into the power of God, you will know it. You will know it. That's exactly what was happening here. It is shaking. It is shaking. The power was too much. You know why it was too much? People were receiving it, drawing it. When you can draw it, it, it will be there. It's not a lack of him. He is already there. It is us who is not drawing. Amen. Amen. Let's grow in this thing. Let us ask, this be the prayer for us, that we will be walking in this spirit of boldness, that we will see the signs and wonders. I want to see the signs and wonders manifesting around me. Believe in that signs and wonders are going to manifest around you. When you go pray and lay your hands on the sick, they will recover. They will recover. Amen? Amen. Because the power of God lives in you. Yes. Things are changing, man, because you are ordained and set by God to see the signs and wonders. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want signs and wonders. Amen. I want Amen. signs and wonders. Yes. Amen. Yes. Can somebody say signs Amen. and wonders signs again, please? Wonders. Come on again, loudly. Signs and wonders. <laughs> they are happening in our lives Amen. right now. Right now, I speak that upon our lives, upon everyone that is listening to us, everyone that we are connected, signs and wonders will be following us. We can boldly declare a thousand may fall at my hand and ten thousand to my right. It shall not come near me in the name of Jesus. I don't know what kind of virus it is. I don't know what kind of a plague it is. I don't know. But it shall not come near me. Bless God for the power of God that is working in me. Amen. Glory be to God Amen. in heaven. Amen. Amen. I speak life over you, not death. Death comes from the devil. He has a plan to steal, kill, and destroy. But I speak life and I speak healing to the bodies that need healing and deliverance to the minds that need deliverance, God. Bring them out of that inequity, the life, the generational curse, Father. Deliver them. Right now I speak the deliverance upon them. That they will be ministered by the angels for the deliverance ministry, God. Many in the church need deliverance. Right now, send forth your ministering angels that they may experience the deliverance in their lives. We bind all the wicked forces in the name of Jesus. And our Christ spirits that are raising, we bind them. The people who are rejecting the salvation, our children, our children's children, we bind those forces, the dark forces that are trying to keep them out of that blindness. We rebuke them. We rebuke all the spirits that are trying to sway our children. Whether it be, it be atheism, whether it be adultery, whether it be homosexuality, whether it be a, a, a falsehood, no matter what it might be, God, we bind those spirits in the name of Jesus and we speak life and life abundance in Jesus' yes, name. Amen. Oh, we give you the glory, God, for you are the source of our life. We are a liberated generation and we are free to worship you. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Enable us to walk in the true, true freedom, true boldness, that we may see your power manifesting in our lives. And your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. All for your glory and your will alone, Father, for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you and continue to pray, continue to stand in the fasting, and I expect great things out of this. Amen. 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 God bless you. Are we done? We can stop. Amen. Amen.